My name is uh, Major Greg Campion. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I work for the Office of Economic and Manpower Analysis, and I run this program called the Career Satisfaction Program. This Career Satisfaction Program is pretty new. 2006 was the first time that this stuff was offered. What is the Career Satisfaction Program? The Army's trying to provide opportunities for our young cadets, West Point and ROTC, to choose the branch that they want to be in, go to the first post of assignment they want to go to, or secure something that you all say you want, graduate school, through the Army. What the Career Satisfaction Program really does is give cadets options. It gives them the ability to shape their Army experience or chart their path within the Army. About fight. I've seen now since 2006, since the inception of the program, more than 7,000 ROTC and West Point cadets take one of these three options. Some of these cadets take two, and they can choose up to two. The demand is extremely high. By giving you these options, uh, I hopefully, we make you more satisfied with what you get, making you better leaders of America's young sons and daughters, right, and better war fighters. All officers volunteer to serve an eight-year military service obligation, or MSO. As an ROTC non-scholarship cadet, you will serve the first three years of your MSO on active duty. In the final five years of your MSO, you can choose to stay on active duty or serve in the reserve component. When you select one of the CSP options, branch of choice, post of choice, or graduate school, you agree to serve years four, five, and six of your MSO on active duty, not in the reserves. You haven't changed your military service obligation at all. You've exchanged three years of reserve service for three years of active service. Branch of choice. Why would I choose the branch of choice? Probably the fundamental most important decision that you're going to make in a very, very short period of time, yes? All the way through all 16 branches, we have people saying, that's where I want to serve. That's where I want to serve the Army. That's where the Army will get the most out of me. They now have an opportunity to say, I'm willing to serve three additional years beyond my commissioning active duty service obligation to get that branch that I want to be in, to get armor, to get infantry, to get transportation or military intelligence. As a senior cadet in 2006, Captain Stephen Dubel would have received the 13th branch on his list. Instead, he decided to take the branch of choice option. To me, branch is everything. I knew I wanted to be an armor officer. I knew that tanks and Bradleys were the vehicles that I wanted to serve on in the military. The Army offered me the CSP for an additional three years, and I jumped on it and haven't looked back since. If I didn't get the armor branch, I would not currently be serving in the military. Post of choice, very simple. You can have some say over where you go first. I want to see the world, right? That's part of the reason why we do this, in addition to leading the greatest troops in the greatest army. So I might want to go to Europe. The other piece is there's professional desires with post of choice. I want to be airborne. I want to be on a striker. I want to get downrange as fast as I possibly can. The Army has assignments and opportunities across the globe. Hawaii, Alaska, Germany, Italy. What this program does is allow the officer to choose where they want to serve. To get post of choice, like branch of choice, you agree to follow your commissioning active duty service obligation of three years with three more years of active duty, all of which takes place within your MSO. It's an individual decision, everyone's got their unique reason, but the bottom line is the choice is now there, and the choice wasn't there before. Here's how graduate school works. 94% of West Point and ROTC cadets said, I want to go to graduate school whether the Army sends me or whether I get out and get it on my own. So the Army wisely got on board and said, well, that needs to be an option for cadets, okay? 
Junior officers want to be able to keep pace with their civilian counterparts. They want to be able to get the graduate level education that keeps them competitive in the military and if they leave the military in the civilian marketplace. The graduate school program gives them now that option. And unlike every other program in the Army, it's your choice. It's not the Army's choice. Okay? It's your choice of what you want to pursue a degree in. And the other cool thing is that you can go anywhere. From an MBA to foreign languages to engineering, you can choose almost any program of study from a broad slate of disciplines. Also, you can select any accredited graduate school in the United States so long as you gain admission. Whether you base your decision on college rank, reputation, or location, you are free to pick the university that is right for you. And high-cost graduate schools are approved for this program. You take this thing off. You keep yourself in shape. You wear your civilian clothes. It's like a two-year sabbatical. The graduate school program can be valued up to $250,000. Once you take into account that the Army pays your full tuition, pays you a stipend for books, a cost of living allowance, plus your full salary and benefits, keeping in mind that the two years spent in school still count towards your 20-year retirement. Like the other CSP options, to secure the graduate school option, you agree to serve three years on active duty in years four, five, and six of your MSO. During this time, you may serve as a company commander. During that period that I pay back for the graduate school option, and it is an option, you're going to be a company commander. How many, want, how many people want to be a company commander? OK, I'll tell you probably the greatest thing you'll ever do. Not only is company command a stepping stone for everything else you're going to do in the Army, you've got something that most 26, 27, 28-year-olds are never going to have in their wildest dreams. Command of 75, 100, 125, 200, 250 soldiers, non-commissioned officers, millions and millions of dollars of equipment. Looks pretty darn good on a resume, doesn't it? Folks in their late 20s in the civilian world don't get these opportunities. And the marketplace recognizes this. There is unbelievable demand for the leadership that our officers, our young junior military officers have and company command really, really gives you a leg up. Well, for all of you who raised your hand to be a company commander, that's pretty sweet, right? Because the cool thing is, if I wanted to be a company commander, I just got a graduate school ticket in my pocket, or my branch or my post, at the same time. During company command, and by your sixth year of service, you should have a clear picture about whether you want to stay in the Army. You now have a choice. If you want to stay in the Army, you can exercise your option and have the Army send you to graduate school. With a payback of three to one, after two years of graduate school, you will return to your branch and remain on active duty. So I've got a decision with this thing, and this is a pretty important point and something a lot of people don't understand about this graduate school option, is that it's an option. You don't have to exercise it. If you decline your graduate school option at your sixth year of service and you wish to leave the Army, you will owe two years in the reserves, your MSO will be complete, and you can leave the Army with a rich resume and no further military obligation. That's the great part about this program is that I don't have to make a decision right now. I can wait till year seven, year seven and a half, and decide at that point what I want to do. Uh, it just gives me a lot more options, and options are never a bad, bad thing to have. The post-9-11 GI Bill has made CSP even more enticing. If you decline your graduate school option and leave the Army, you can still have graduate school partially paid for by using your post-9-11 GI Bill benefits. On the other hand, if you exercise your graduate school option and have the Army send you to graduate school, you can transfer your post-9-11 GI Bill benefits to your family. One of the cool things about the new GI Bill is the ability to give your GI Bill, now that the Army paid for your college, to your kids or your spouse. Okay, so I graduated from Texas 
and I'm 31 years old. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and guess what they just got? Both of them, at five and three, have half of their college paid for. That's pretty huge, okay? Because the Army sent me to graduate school, and I gave my GI benefits to my children. If you pass on CSP while you're a cadet, but decide down the road that you want the Army to send you to fully funded graduate school, the Army does have other options outside of CSP, such as Advanced Civil Schooling or ACS. However, ACS has limits on program of study, school of choice, and cost. And getting ACS is by no means guaranteed. With the Advanced Civil Schooling program, you have about a 10% chance of getting selected for fully funded graduate school. The graduate school program offers near certainty of that selection. Every one of you is going to weigh your options differently. Every one of you is in a different life situation. But no matter what, if you want it, you can get it under this program.